Hey, welcome back. Uh, so uh, apologize if the sound isn't the greatest. Uh, I'm in kind of a temporary studio, no talking head, none of that stuff uh, today, uh, but we're going to make the best of it. So I think we have a fun little problem for us today. We're going to use a Monte Carlo simulation in order to assess the uncertainty surrounding the project duration. And in this case, What's really uh, interesting is figuring out how convergence bias through the various possible paths in a project uh, might change uh, our outcomes or change the probabilities of project duration. Because of course we can do an analytical evaluation of the critical path itself, but it might not remain the critical path in all instances of the project. So I've set up the spreadsheet, I'm gonna pop to the back sheet and we're just gonna look at the problem itself. So here is the problem. I've taken those various activities that we saw on the previous page using their expected uh, durations. And so you see over here in the table, uh, we have optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic. So we're using a PERT evaluation to arrive at the expected task duration along with the variance of that task duration. So we do that for all of our tasks and we do our forward backward pass through the project and we're able to identify the critical path which is the red path here. And obviously we have a bunch of possible other paths going through the project. So I, I'm not gonna go over it, but I just wanna point out, you absolutely can do an analytical, ad, analytical analysis of your critical path, understand the uncertainty of it, but it doesn't capture the convergence bias of different uh, uh, possible paths particularly well. So with the Monte Carlo simulation we're going to do today, we should be able to get all of that. So back to our summary sheet where we're going to start. Uh, so again, we've already seen this. We have our PERT analysis done. We have our expected and variance for each of the task durations copied down. And what I need to do is I need to, using a random number generator and the probability uh, generate uh, different durations, path dura or different task durations, and then turn those into path durations and project durations. Uh, and then we'll whip those through a whole bunch of iterations to see what Monte Carlo has to say. So we're going to be using the reverse invert or the uh, norm inverse function. So equals norm inverse. And of course, you can look up the uh, quick help that comes with it. I uh, happen to know that the first thing we need is that probability you see here. And this is where we're going to use our random number generator, which will, for any new calculation on the spreadsheet, generate a new random number from 0 to 1. Uh, sorry, close that. And then we need our mean, which is our expected value. So we'll put that in there. And then we need our standard deviation. So we have the variance. So to get uh, the standard deviation, we need the square root of our variance, I uh, can't quite get to it. So I'll just choose G8 and we'll change that back to a seven. Close that and that should be everything we need. And so now the cell is generating a, uh, based on the probabilities of the task duration, a random generation or a random task duration for that task. Now we need to copy that down for all of the other tasks. So I'm just going to copy it, go down here, I'll go back to my home tab and paste our formulas in. And now we have a random uh, generated task duration for each task. And you can see if I do anything in the spreadsheet, let's just put in any random number there, you'll see all the random numbers update to generate new tasks. Okay, so to get to where we want to go, particularly if we're going to take into account the convergence bias, uh, we're going to look at all the different paths through the project. And so I've come up with seven possible paths through the project. If we go back to our Activia node, you can see, you know, A, E, J, M, O, uh, A, D, I, M, O, etc., etc. So I, I'm going to figure out a duration for each of the possible paths. Now I'm going to have to do that uh, more or less manually. Uh, so I'm going to be using, uh, this identifies the path, AEJMO in this case. So I'm going to say equals A plus uh, E. So line that up, choose E and J and M and O. 
Now I'm just going to turn those into absolutes. So I'm going to use my function f4 to go back and turn them into absolutes so we don't have any issues later on. And that should be it. So we have our path duration calculated for path one in this instance uh, highlighted there. So that's a bit painful. So I'm going to go ahead and put those all in for paths two through seven. And we'll come back uh, just as soon as I have those done. Okay, so we've got them all put in. Uh, we're calculating our um, path durations for each of our paths. And I'm going to... Oh, there, I had that in. So our project duration, uh, sorry, I, had, I already had it filled out, I uh, deleted it. Uh, so that's just going to be the maximum of any of our path durations. So it's equal to the maximum of any path duration. And we'll put in our project duration right there. So I also added a little bit of uh, conditional formatting. You see the 50.6 on path two is showing up as critical. This is locked in on path three because that's our analytical critical path. But in this instance, we see that path three isn't critical, that path two ended up being longer. And so we're using conditional formatting to indicate that. So I'm just going to go up to the conditional formatting, manage rules, so we can see that. And here we say, if the cell value is equal to the project duration, then we want to format it as red because that would make it critical. And so we've done that or applied the same conditional formatting for all of B through H uh, of that row. So the one other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a statement. Is it critical? Yes or no? And so we're going to do that with the if statement so equals if brackets. And we're going to use this minus the project duration, uh, set it equal to zero. And if that is true, we're going to label it as critical. And if it's not true, we're going to have a null set. And close that. And obviously it wasn't critical, so it doesn't choose it, but we can copy the formulas again uh, over that range. Ah, <laughs> I've... I think I make this little mistake every time. So obviously, when we look up here, I-26 has to be absolute. Uh, it changes as it goes through. So function F4, there we go. Make it absolute now. Uh, pay special. And there we go. Yeah. Iterates the project one more time. We see path two is now the critical path and it is annotating it as critical down there. Uh, that's not going to play a lot in this version of the spreadsheet, but I'm going to offer you to come back uh, to look at a more enhanced version of the same spreadsheet where you can demonstrate that convergence bias happening as you step through your Monte Carlo simulation. So hold your horses for that, and uh, we'll have that one coming up uh, right away. So now that we've got this all set up, Really, it's just a matter of setting up a data table using the what if analysis that Excel has brought in, and we should be able to do a, uh, a Monte Carlo simulation for this and then get the feedback as to the distribution of uncertainties around the project duration. So our project duration is 52.6. Let's set up our table here. So we're going to just, for demonstration purposes, use a thousand iterations, not very many when it comes to Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, but we'll set up our iteration labels, and I'm just going to carry that down for a thousand. And go back to the top, and we're going to make this equal to our project duration. And now, when we look at our data table, it's just Control Shift down, go back up to the top go to the data tab and use what if analysis. We're going to choose our data table and don't need anything for the row input cell and the column input cell, any empty cell that's not in our data table. And if we choose OK, we will see Excel generates uh, a whole bunch of different iterations of our uh, data and, and walks through it. And now 
we can use all of these durations as a set to analyze the uncertainties around it. So I'm just going to choose all of my durations and I'm going to go up to the name box and I'm going to call them durations. And that's just going to make it easier. So for example, if I want to know what the average of uh, the durations are, we can just put that in. And if I want to get the standard deviation, same thing. We can put that in here. And of course, we can go ahead and look at probabilities of them happening above or below a certain amount. Now I'm going to integrate that all into the next sort of uh, pretty top spreadsheet, if you will, that makes this really, really reusable uh, with very little effort. So uh, that's more or less it. This is how we can use Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, takes into account the uh, uh, potential convergence bias that you might get through uh, different path durations on, on your project and really start to understand what the uncertainties are for a project duration. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will leave a link down here. We're going to pretty this up. We're going to make it more useful. We're going to integrate a little bit of VBA for some data management, and you'll be able to demonstrate uh, and do simulations to your heart's content uh, as you look at different mitigations for different uh, tasks in your project.